Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you to do um, a natural stone today. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of craving using the brushes. It's been a while, so I am going to use the angle spot detailer today, which is my blue brush that looks like this. It's angled on the end, just so I can see where I'm placing my dots. And it is a size 10-0. So I have this natural granite stone that is just gorgeous um, from Maine that I get them in the summers when we go out there for our vacation. Um, it does have some pitting in it, but I don't want to put anything on it because I don't want to change the stone in any way other than putting the mandala that I want here. So I think I'm going to do kind of a sand and sea type idea with the metallics, the brown metallics. and blues, blues, turquoise, those ones, um, and we'll see what we come up with for today. Maybe we'll do a spiral one, kind of feel on some movement, and it's been a while, so uh, if you stick with me, we'll get my supplies together here, and you can also follow along using dotting tools, just placing the dots in the same place, similar colors, or go for your own colors, but um, yeah, I'll be using my brushes today. Okay, so first I'm going to start off with a white center using the Snow White Americana Titanium. And on this, because it's not a canvas, obviously I can't really measure guidelines, um, but there are some, I just kind of eyeball the center, but you can measure to get an approximation about where you wanted to put, start your center dot. And there are some other ways out there, stone stencils. The Happy Dotting Company makes ones like this, the silicone for about this size stone. So if you found a stone that was about the size of these awesome stencils, you could even use one of these to place your center dot. Those are helpful too. Or you could even just measure you know, your stone size. This one is about three and a half inches and so you would just go one and a half in and then one and a half in to kind of gauge where you would want your center so I'm just gonna get a good amount on my brush I'm really overloading it because I want to do a larger dot and those of you who are using the brushes, you're really just overloading it and pushing it around into a circle like this. And that'll start for your, your center dot for your stone. Okay, and now I'm just going to steal from the center because we already have the white there. And I'm just going to do, make like a plus sign with some little white dots here. So those would be your 90 degree angles and then these are the 45 degrees. Alright, so depending on your stone, like I said earlier, this one's kind of pitted, so a lot of, some of my dots might not be absolutely perfect, but I kind of like that with having the challenge of a natural stone. Um, it's not necessarily going to be perfect, and I kind of like that. So, next color I think that I'm going to use is an oyster beige. And that's going to go in between the white dots. So we're just kind of progressively going from white to like the sandy browns and the metallics. And that way you get a little bit of progression on it into the sand. And then we'll switch over to the blues for our water. Cause I don't know about you all, but I am ready for beach, beach time, summer can't come soon enough. OK, 
Okay, the next color I have is Venetian Gold, and it's one of the Dazzling Metallics from DecoArt. Okay, so this one is just going to be a little bit larger, and we're going to go um, in between the beige, just like that. And for those of you who are trying the brushes, I want, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, how are you getting circular dots? I am forget to think about the technique as I'm doing it, but I'm just gently pressing down and kind of wiggling it around in a circle for this size dot. As you get bigger, you push a little harder and push the bristles out a little more. But for this size dot, you don't really have to push too hard, and you're just kind of wiggling them around in a circle to kind of encourage the paint to go into that circle for you to make the dot. All right, the next one I have is an Extreme Sheen from the Decor, and it's bronze. Very, very glittery really awesome glitter effect here and that's going to go in between the Venetian ones that we did and so I'm pushing down a little bit harder and the extreme sheen ones are gorgeous they're a little more challenging to work with but they, it's worth the challenge they're a little I guess tackier stringier so when you push down and pull up even with the dotting tools just be careful you're going to get a little string and you don't want that to flap over on your piece especially not one like this because I'm not using a background on it so I'd have to hurry up and get my baby wipes out or a q-tip or something to hurry up and clean it off So the next metallic is going to be the last one for our sand here. It's a rich espresso. So it's a little bit darker. And I'm going to, I want a little bit of a bigger dot for this one, so I'm really just overloading the brush. And then I'm bending the brush around in a circle. Can you see the bristles around like that? So really it's just a little more pressure and just swirl it around, swirl the bristles around into a circle. There's a little bit of a pit there, it doesn't want to go quite in a full circle, but one way you can avoid that is to varnish your stone ahead of time to fill in the pits. Or there's other products on the market too that you can fill in pits with. Sometimes I'll just use a little extra paint right there to fill it in. There you have your sand started out nicely. So now I'm going to go back to a little bit of white to kind of set the stage for the blues. 
and you know kind of in the theme of the ocean meets the sand type you know you have the waves crashing and all the bubbles so let's just do do a half side of dots so we'll make this one into a spiral spiral swipe sand and sea boy lots of s's there So for these ones, I'm just gently dotting, and then you let up. If you want smaller dots, push down a little harder for the, the bigger ones. Okay, so I'm going to go with Bahama Blue to start. We'll start off light and go to dark. And just keep on following the little dots that we have set here on the white. And I'll keep it around the same size. Remember to breathe, breathe, breathe. I know all of you are probably holding your breath as I do this as well. Just breathe and relax and enjoy the painting. And I need to remind myself of that quite often. So that was the Bahama breeze. All right, so I just adjusted my camera and it fell in the paint. <laughs> so I think we're good to go gonna wait for that to dry and pick out another color here so we're gonna do open water next it's a little bit darker and this is from the new colors that came out in 2019 for deco art and we're gonna follow that Bahama Bahama blue around that. And just work with the natural parts of your stone too. So you have a huge divot here. I'm just gonna work that into the design as much as I can there. 
But these stones are so gorgeous. I love the granite from Maine and New England where I'm from. New Hampshire, the granite state. So you can see as you build out, you're starting to kind of get more of that pinwheel spiral effect too. Which really helps with the look of the movement. This one actually might spin pretty well afterwards too because the other side of this stone is a little more rounded. Okay, I'm going to throw a little of the mermaid tail in there, which is another one of the new Americana line for 2019. And this one is just a gorgeous aquamarine type blue, blue-green color. So you can see how rich that is. Okay, how many of you are counting? How many dots? <laughs> it doesn't have to be exact. No one else is going to come through and count. You have to work with the size of your stone and where you can actually place the dots. So don't don't stress, just let it be enjoyable. And again, this is that side that has the divots. So you just have to kind of rise to the challenge here and just put it around where you want to have the dots go and just kind of fit them in there. Okay, one more here. There we go. Okay, so the next is a tropical blue. And that is from the new line as well. So I'm gonna continue around with the dots here. I'm debating if I want this to be the last ring of dots or if a row of dots rather. Because so I want to fit some swipes in here also. And I think four colors is probably good. You have to go with the size of the stone. If the stone was larger too, I probably could do a little bit bigger, but it's just working with what you have and where you can fit and make a little bit of a plan here.
Okay, I changed my mind. I'm gonna do one more ring because I really like this Royal Navy color too. I'm happy I did that. Okay. So it's just giving us a little more depth in the color, a little more contrast. And it also pushed it out one more row. So it gives us a little bit of a longer swipe to start off with. Somebody had a little too much caffeine today. Yep, I'm glad I did that. So, you never know unless you try. So I'm glad I went with the dark again at the end here. So now we're gonna start some swipes using the same colors here that we have for our line rows of dots. Just gonna rinse my brush here. And I think I'll start with the white to kind of cap off our wave here. And just give it a little bit of contrast <laughs> too, which I like to do. I like to alternate it up. So for the swipes with the brushes, you just get a good amount on it. And I'm going to do it the length of the dots here that we have. So I'm going to push down hard at the beginning, and then you're just going to slowly drag it down in to the space there. And you're letting up as you go too. So I'm pushing down hard initially to get that fatter top and then just slowly let it curve around and lighten up as you go. And now with your dotting tools it's a little bit different. You're gonna have to augment how what size dotting tool you use for how long the swipe will go. So let me just show you quick on the paper here. Let me grab a dotting tool. Where are they here? Okay. So for about this length of a swipe, here maybe I'll do it on this. I'll use a darker color so you can see it on the white, but this will give you an idea. So for about that length, you want to really, really load your tool up till it's almost dripping off. And you're going to push down and depending on how long you need it. So this one is going to just push down and you follow it around the dots that you have here. Now if you wanted a longer one, you can put your dot down, go back, grab a bunch more paint, and then drag it. You got longer, right? So grab a little bit more and drag it out a little longer. So you see how you can do it with the same tool and just drag the extra paint out farther. Or you can find one that, that has a larger ball on the end of the stylus. And really dip it 
down in the paint and you're going to end up with a little bit fatter swipe so this is a larger ball on the end and it'll hold more paint so it will go long like that and you'll have a little bit fatter end so you see how it's almost dripping off and you can shape them however you want the tail there's lots of different ways that you can do this with the stylus too you know if you want it even longer sometimes you can do the double dot too with that just double dot it on here and just load it up and then drag it and just grab it and drag some more and that one's almost two inches so you can get really long swipes with your dotting tools so don't lose heart you can still do them I'll go back here to my my little brush and so I'm pushing down and so about the length of this you're gonna probably use um, a medium-sized dotting tool the ball on the end whatever your middle size is and then the shorter swipes you're gonna want smaller because of course they'll hold less paint and just take your time I know I've said this a bunch of times but the swipe swoosh a lot of the names that people call it dot drag or just even the look of them kind of gives you that feel of a fast movement but it doesn't have to be fast just take your time and pull the paint down and around where you want it to go carefully and it doesn't have to feel rushed Okay, I think I'm actually going to reverse the order that I put down these dots. So I'm going to go back to that Royal Navy blue. I really like that next to the white. <laughs> and now I'm trying to kind of keep my design in a circular form. So in order to do that, I kind of have to bring my swipe for this one down a little bit and over a little more like that. So just a little bit farther down. one's right in, it, in a divot here so I'm just gonna kind of fill it with a little bit of paint and then pull the tail around one thing you want to keep in mind too is don't don't be so hard on yourself it's not gonna be perfect ever we're not machines it's meant to be enjoyable art so my tails are overlapping on some of them, some of them they're not. Are you really analyzing that when you look at the piece as a whole? I don't think so. I don't do that to other people's art. So I'm not going through saying, oh, well, that one's a half an inch long and that one's only a quarter inch or that one's thicker than that one. Once you finish the whole piece and you're not up close and personal, you'll be able to really come back and enjoy it. And sometimes you even need to just walk away and come back to it. That's helpful as well. Okay, so next was that tropical blue. And 
And I don't think I'm going to get many more swipes in here because you don't really want to crowd it too much. So it's not the end of the world that we didn't get to use all the colors. And this one's just going to be a little one in here. Just a little comma in there to tuck it in and just round out the piece. This one has a little divot here, so I just have to be careful not to let the paint fill that because it is off my center a little bit. There. And then you have your fun sand and sea stone. Spiral stone. How did I say that the first time? Sand and sea swipe spiral. <laughs> but one of the things you can do too, if we have a little space on the outskirts here, you know, you could play with it a little bit and put some little dots like it was waves splashing out. And I didn't want to do the same color over itself, so you kind of just play with the colors and just make it your own. But that way, too, you're giving the illusion that it's like a little splash of the waves. just kind of, I don't know, it makes it fun to just put stuff on the outskirts too. One big thing nowadays too I think is personalizing it so you could even put someone's name on the side of the stone. Lots of different things you can do with it. So I hope you had fun doing this little sand and sea swipe spiral with me. Oh I did get it. <laughs> And I hope you enjoy doing this design. It was great coming back to paint with you guys again today. I'm hoping to, like I said, get them once a month if I can. If you're looking for my art to purchase, I am on Etsy right now. Um, or if you see something on Instagram or Facebook that caught your eye that is not in the Etsy shop, just give me a message and we can work something out. Or if you're on here, you may be creating your own, so you don't need mine. <laughs> all right. I hope you all have an awesome day. Hope you all had great Easter's. And uh, I look forward to doing another video with you all soon. If you're new and not subscribed, if you want to get notifications for future videos that I put up, you can just hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification each time I post a new video. So. All right, guys. You guys are great. I look forward to interacting with you on Facebook and in the comments.